Hi everybody, my name is Rose Santana, and today we're going to be talking about the different zones of the oceans and the sharks that inhabit them. Let's go! The first zone we're going to talk about is the epipelagic zone, otherwise known as the sunlight zone. And this is because there's enough sunlight to allow for plants and algae to grow here. It starts at the sea surface and goes down to approximately 200 meters. Now, most of the sharks that we know and love, such as the great white, the black tip, whale sharks, hammerhead sharks, just to name a few, tend to inhabit this zone preferably. However, whale sharks have been known to dive down as deep as 1,900 meters. Isn't that crazy? And great whites have been recorded at depths as great as 1,200 meters, but typically they prefer to spend their time closer to the sun just like we do. <laughs> the next zone is the mesopelagic zone. This zone is also known as the twilight zone because it receives very little sunlight and is home to many bioluminescent organisms, such as the bioluminescent black belly lantern shark and bioluminescent cat sharks. Isn't that cool? So just to put things into perspective for you guys, when we're talking about bioluminescence, it means animals that can create their own light. And typically they'll use it to find mates, to look for food, to hide, things like that. It's a really nifty, it's a really nifty feature. So other sharks that we can find here include gulper sharks and dogfish sharks, which are typically used for research and educational purposes. Now, how deep can we go? Let's check out the bathypelagic zone. This depth ranges from 1,000 to 4,000 meters, and it's also known as the midnight zone because sunlight cannot reach the zone. It's very difficult for animals to survive here because there's low oxygen and there's not that many nutrients. So most of the sharks that we're going to find here are scavenging sharks, such as the frill shark, the sleeper shark, the goblin shark, and the blunt nose six gill shark. Cool, right? Another really nifty predator that we can find down here is known as the cookie cutter shark. And it's known as the cookie cutter shark because it chomps down into other animals and takes a chunk right out, leaving a little hole that kind of looks like it was you cut with a cookie cutter, hence the name. Now, these cookie cutter sharks are known to inhabit this depth during the day and then moving up to the sunlight zone at night to feed and take a chomp out of their next victim. Rose, what else can we find? Next up is the abyssopelagic zone, otherwise known as the abyss. This zone remains in perpetual darkness. So it's funny because the term abyss actually comes from the Greek word epithomenos, which means bottomless. These depths go from 3,000 to 6,000 meters. Crazy, right? And it's totally dark. But sharks are typically absent from here. We tend to think that because there's no sunlight, there are no plants producing oxygen, and there aren't that many options for these sharks to be able to feed on here, especially considering the fact that they have a high energy demand and have an oil rich liver that they use for buoyancy and it can't be sustained in these types of environments. So unfortunately, the sharky goodness has to stay up top. Now, Rose, why are we gonna continue going down the ocean layers if the sharks only inhabit the first three? Well, why not? We're already here. The last zone is the hadopelagic zone also known as the trenches. It's the deepest region of the ocean lying within oceanic trenches. You might have heard of one of the most famous ones, Marianas Trench. In fact, it's the deepest known depth of the ocean, coming in at 10,984 meters. Yikes. A lot of these regions still haven't been explored yet because... It's just so difficult to get there, and only a relatively small number of fish species are known to be in this zone. This part of the ocean is very difficult to explore, but who knows? In the future, we might find a lot of other cool critters here, right? With that being said, I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. This video was put together in collaboration with Sharks for Kids and Fish and Fins, so go ahead and give them a follow for all sharky goodness. And as always, if anybody has any questions or would just like to chat, you can always reach out to me. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And as always, just keep swimming.